Will California become an island? An actual physical island? Here in the Inland Empire, we're about an hour or so from the beach, and it's a bit of drive when you have to go through traffic. And once we approach the water, we have a few options for the best beach. But is a shorter drive in our future? There are those that claim that an earthquake will make California an island sooner rather than later. And on the surface, that sounds like a great idea. The Inland Empire real estate may increase in value because we're closer to the beach. But can this really happen? According to the U.S. Geological Survey, there are over 500,000 earthquakes in the world every year. Of those, 10,000 are in Southern California. That's a bit more than I would have guessed and surely one of those earthquakes will be strong enough to split the state at the fault. It's referred to as the big one. An earthquake so powerful that it'll split the state into two. But where would that occur? In particular, we're talking about the San Andreas Fault. The San Andreas Fault runs from the Salton Sea north to the Pacific near San Francisco. The famous 1906 San Francisco earthquake was on that fault. And interestingly enough, the fault was discovered because of that earthquake. And we think of Southern California when we think of San Andreas, but it was because of this Northern earthquake we know of its existence. Plus, it was named after the San Andreas Valley located near San Francisco. And there are many faults in SoCal, but the big one is predicted to be on the San Andreas. The San Andreas is on the boundary for two tectonic plates that separate the state. We have the Pacific on the west and North American on the east side. And depending on which side you live determines where your home will be after the earthquake. Or will it? There are two things to consider when getting excited about owning new oceanfront property. How big are the earthquakes in California anyway? The Richter scale uses data from a seismometer to measure the magnitude or the strength of an earthquake. Movies talk about a magnitude of 10.0 or even turn it up to 11 that'll cause damage that we would need for this to happen. The strongest earthquake in California history is only 7.9, and it was in 1857. The last major earthquake we had that caused damage was in 1994. It's called the Northridge earthquake, and it was 30 years ago in 1994. And the most recent large earthquake was in Ridgecrest in 2019. It registered higher than Northridge at 7.1. You know, maybe there's something to having Ridge in your name. The biggest earthquake in recorded history was a 9.5, and it was in Chile. And most of the 10,000 earthquakes we have each year are under 4.0. And most are so small, we can't even feel them. So it's highly unlikely we'll have a 10.0 in the near future. Maybe close, but not one strong enough to split the fault. Alaska, on the other hand, has a 7.0 or bigger almost every year. One other fact is that the fault is not one continuous fault. It's made up of multiple seismic segments where earthquakes would occur and be isolated. The most important reason California will not become an island is, well, that's not how it works. According to the USGS, California is firmly planted on top of the Earth's crust in a location where it spans two tectonic plates. These plates are moved horizontally, slowly sliding past one another, and the Pacific plate is moving northwest with respect to the North American plate at approximately 46 millimeters per year. That's the same rate that your fingernails grow. The strike-slip earthquakes on the San Andreas Fault are a result of this plate motion. And there's nowhere for the state to split off. However, Los Angeles and San Francisco will one day be adjacent to each other. And while scientists go out on a limb and predict there's a 99% chance of a 6.7 earthquake in the next 30 years, it won't create a new Pacific Island. And on that, it's time to move or buy more real estate near the fault note. That's it for our show. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on All the Right Moves with Jeff Moss.